one fine day, he marched down to that corner drugstore and bought the dummy in the window he had his heart set on. <laughs> he named him Danny. Now, he thought about calling him Fred, and when I asked why he chose Danny, he said, I can put Danny on my fanny. I can't do that with Fred. Fred's dead. <laughs> well, and years later, when he applied for active duty during World War II, the dummy helped him out. You see, when he put on the application that he was a ventriloquist, well, that's how he got moved into the performer's unit overseas. Stars and stripes. The soldiers put on a show called Stars and Gripes. <laughs> and it was a great training ground for him because he got to work with fellas who were already professional entertainers. Now, Donald had a great act, but after a while, he didn't want to be a ventriloquist anymore. He was tired of lugging that heavy dummy all over the soggy Philippines. He hightailed it on over to the infirmary found some bandages, wrapped them around the dummy's jaw and head, took that dummy out on stage and announced to the audience that Danny had a toothache and couldn't talk. <laughs> oh, I've got so many stories. I've even got a little song about him. And if you don't mind, I'd like to sing it for you. Hit it, boys. <laughs> Great Depression knocked on the door. They rented out his room to board it, so the kitchen became his clean to the quarter. He was just plain dog to his big brothers. They used to fight among one another. Little Don was skinny, not much of a scrapper. He's hiding in the kitchen, he's a proud napper. Don, Don, the farmer's son, only had one Not a lover was like his ever would. He knew how to dip it in the bud. He knew how to dip it in the bud. Don, Don, the farmer's son, only had one bullet for a barn. He's done. Not a lover was like him ever was. He knew how to dip it in the bud. He knew how to dip it in the bud. Well, you can see why Dad loved his Aunt Belle. She was a ding-a-ling. <laughs>